Bilal Powell, and you're watching Dan Sports News. You know, Eric, are you watching Dan Sports News? I'm Emma Anderson, you're watching Dan Sports News. This is Javon Cornell, you're watching Dan Sports News. This is Jaden Gould, and you're listening to the Dan Sports News and Friends podcast. What's up, everybody? It's Clee Watt. You're listening to the Dan Sports News podcast. First off, congrats on the win. How was it fighting out there in Mexico? Uh, yeah, it was a great experience. Uh, I fought uh, in the UK. How was it going out there, putting on a show? We know all six of your teammates or your stable mates got the win. What was it like out there supporting your teammates, and how did it feel to get the win? So great, of course, um, that everybody uh, came out successful and uh, got the win. Um, I was um, hoping that we would uh, put on a little bit more of a uh, better self. Uh, uh, Matt, we were all prepared. Now, I watched a stream live on Facebook. Um, you had like four knockdowns in the first round, but the ref was like not counting those as knockdowns. Yeah. Tell me about that. What was up with that? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I feel like uh, the ref was kind of uh, being a little uh, biased. Uh, probably the uh, hometown advantage, probably. So, but yeah, some of the. It was, some of the knockdowns was kind of clean. And I, uh, and it, I feel like it wasn't fair that uh, I had that type of rap, didn't get called for the knockdown. Now you eventually did get the knockout win in the fourth round. How did it feel to go out there and finally get that win? How great was that moment? Dream come true. Uh, the plan uh, was successful. Uh, I was working on that before. Uh, that was like the game plan to break him down with the body shot. And I'm slowing down, so uh, everything went well. What do you feel like you need to improve on for your next match? I feel like I got uh, hit a little bit too much, but that was me being, um, me, I was being aware, but that was just me trying to take them off. Uh, sometimes, like, at a point, I was getting a little bit frustrated with the ref because of the, uh, the call, so I was trying to take them, uh, take them off and got hit. Maybe just uh, being aware of more. And was that your first time fighting uh, outside? Uh, yes, I think so. Well, yeah, I was fighting without like a tent or anything. Right. Well, like, like outdoors. Was trying to be yeah, I was the first time. In the live stream, you were listening to music before the fight. Uh, what music gets you going ready before the match? Uh, I kind of listen to uh, it depends how, how I'm feeling that day. But at that moment, I was just Hip hop, I was the uh, little baby and the baby, uh, both of them. Uh, who else I was listening to? Uh, who else I was listening to? But really just like hip hop uh, type of rap. That just uh, motivation type of music. So um, we know you're actually Snoop Dogg's nephew. So is he somebody you listen to a lot? Is he on your playlist before fights? And not, and not so much because, uh, I mean, his. his his music more is like a laid back type of chill type of music. I mean, some music is like it's like um, kind of gets you pumped up, but it's not so much like that. It's more just chilling, laid back type. Uh, so yeah, I only listen to his music uh, before the fight. Yeah, tell me about some of the guys who have endorsed you. We know Snoop Dogg, Floyd Mayweather. Um, you're from Long Beach, and Willie McGinnis is too. Who are some of those guys who have endorsed you? Incredible, uh, a blessing. Not, not everybody get that type of uh, love and uh, encouragement from uh, outstanding and, uh, and role models like that. And you fight at 126 uh, featherweight. Who are some of the other guys that you look up to or that you grew up watching at 126? I'm not sure. I don't even uh, look at the weights like that. Uh, I'm not even sure who was at 126, really. So, uh, yeah, I collect them all back for that one. But besides him, uh, Floyd, uh, of course, uh, I don't think the Fonz did that one. But if he was, then him, uh, like people have like gone out type of weight, uh, probably be them. Uh, I don't know what weight for no Whitaker was at, but he seemed like he got a light weight around there. So him too. Uh, just skillful boxers and uh, boxers that's uh, smart in the ring. And don't take too many punishments. You also play football at Long Beach Poly, which we know is a top school for football players 
the most guys in the NFL have gone to Long Beach Poly. Do you currently still play football at Long Beach Poly? Uh, well, uh, I stopped. Uh, I played freshman year, and I was like, and I was like, but and I really uh, was like, I wasn't really looking forward to playing that year, but uh, somehow I just ended up playing, and uh, that was my last year. I made it my last year because I. Uh, so we don't expect to see you on the football field this season uh yeah i'm uh i'm done with that uh, yeah. long beach probably like we said lots of great athletes who come there also their basketball team do you talk with some of those guys on the football team the guys on the basketball team who are top ranked athletes like yourself only in basketball and football, you know, who are going to play D1. Do you talk to those guys? How is that? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I talk, uh, I've been knowing them uh, guys. Uh, we talk all the time. You know, two people, we all kind of just alike, uh, humble and just uh, trying to make it to the side. Now, we've seen videos since you were eight years old, sparring and fighting. So how old were you when you first started boxing? Well, uh, my dad actually started started teaching me at a, a young age, around like four, three, like around that. Um, but then I actually got in the gym when I was around seven years old, seven and a half, eight years old. And that was uh, my official day boxing in the boxing gym when I was like eight years old. Jackrabbit Boxing, which is your dad, he owns that. How long has he had that gym? Uh, it's probably been uh, probably four years now. And how is it working that you have your own gym? How great is it that you can be there, you know, 24-7, even in the coronavirus, you're still able to get out there and work out? Yeah, that was, uh, that was a great, like, that's something that's really been helping us out, especially, uh, 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 the COVID, um, since my dad was in the gym, I still got the privilege to come to the gym and to work out and um, not have to worry about um, staying at home and finding different places and stuff when I have the, uh, the whole gym to myself. Uh, great. We saw, of course, you were sparring Leo Santa Cruz, who has the big fight against Gervonta Tank yeah. Davis, the big pay-per-view fight. Yeah. How was it sparring Santa Cruz? Uh, it, was, it was cool. I mean... Um, he got uh, conditioning, he got uh, very good conditioning, and, uh, and he got, you know how to face his punches. Uh, like, uh, of course, he's like a veteran in the game, so he know how to um, pick his shots, and uh, just know how to uh, adjust the different things that I do, so it was good working, uh, great experience working with him. And of course, you've also sparred Sean Porter, um, how was it working with him? Kind of the same thing with uh, Santa Cruz. Um, well, he was, uh, I'm not sure how much uh, a strong way, but he looked pretty heavy. So, yeah, he was pretty a uh, strong guy. I had to adjust to that and uh, come in with a different game plan uh, with the size that he has and uh, his skill set. Now, tell me a little bit about your amateur career. We know you're a 10 time national champion, two-time international champion. You fought in Ireland, like you said. Tell me a little bit about your amateur career. That was a, a good run for me. Uh, being a 10-time national, a two-time national champion, it means a lot, it means a lot to me. Uh, two-time national champion, uh, traveling, around the, uh, traveling the world, and again, that experience, that helped me a lot throughout my career. So that, uh, all that, uh, all the competing that I did in amateurs, uh, helped, well, is going to help me in the long run from uh, different fighters and opponents I'll have. You're 16 years old. Obviously, the Olympics is next year, and then there's the 2024 Olympics. Why turn pro now? What was your decision with that? Um, I didn't uh, want to wait. Well, because I'm not sure if the, uh, the Olympics still going to have it. It's already been pushed back a year. Uh, people are still cautious about uh, COVID, so I wasn't sure if I want to uh, wait that long. And uh, who knows when, but uh, they'll open back up and I'll have the opportunity to 
to fight again. So then I just took a, a different um, path, and a path that I um, believed that was the best, best for me and my team. So I that too. So started through, and uh, that's where we are now. I'm sure you know that Devin Haney, who's a world champion now at 21 years old, he started off in Mexico um, when he was 17 years old, but he also started off in Mexico. He has his own promotion company, Devin Haney Promotions. Are you guys kind of taking a page out of his textbook um, with the H2O promotions and stuff like that? Are you guys kind of yeah. copying him in a way? Uh, yeah, we uh uh, that was a smart move. I feel that he did. Um, and having his own promotions and um, he was doing what he uh, did throughout his career, which I feel like it was a smart move that he did. So uh, we just just looking looking at it from the outside and, and just seeing what it looks, what it seems like, and that uh, that could feel like it fits with me too. That plan. And he, of course, Devin Haney, he has a co-promotional deal with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom. Are you guys looking to eventually have a co-promotional deal with H2O Promotions, whether it's The Zone, Showtime, PBC? Is a co-promotional deal something you guys are looking into in the future? Yeah, uh, that's up to my team, but I think that's an option uh, for sure. Uh, that, uh, do, uh, that's what I I don't know if you know this, but Devin Haney actually fought nine times in one year, his second year. For next year in 2021, would you like to fight nine times next year? Uh, that's, that's probably the plan. Uh, it was, uh, once again, it's probably up to my team what they think is best for me, but that might be uh, wherever it is uh, good for my health. When do you think your next fight will be and how many fights more do you think you'll have in 2020? My next fight might be on the 26th of this month, but we're not sure yet. So, uh, yeah, yeah, again, up to my team. So. Right, of course, of course. How many more fights do you think you'll have in Mexico before you can fight back in California? Is it 17 is the age you can get your boxing license in California? Tell me about that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, think, I think 18 is going to be uh, 18 for California, but I think 17. Um, in Nevada, but I think I'll probably be fighting um, a few times um, in Mexico. Maybe um, other places too, probably like the UK, probably not, but um, I'll be fighting in Mexico. Other than yourself, who do you like to watch currently? Which active fighter is your favorite to watch? Currently, um, oh, I got a few. Um, I like uh, Javante, of course. Canelo, Cam uh, Stafford, or them like the main three right there that I uh, that I study uh, from. You know, uh, while uh, I wouldn't really say study, but uh, I take a little bit of different things that they have. And which weight class do you see yourself uh, moving into and being your main weight class? Do you plan on staying at featherweight? for a while or do you plan to gradually move up the weight classes? Yeah, I think I'll uh, move up the weight class. Uh, but it depends on my body. I'm still 16, so I don't have uh, the grown, my uh, developed, fully, fully developed body yet. So, But I'm thinking it'll be probably year round, like uh, the 130, uh, end up at, at like the main. Yeah, we talked about some of the celebrities that have endorsed you and stuff like that. Who was one person that like made your jaw drop that you were surprised that they reached out to you? Uh, it was probably uh, Floyd, but that's when I was like eight years old. Like when I first started school, first the 50 got in the gym. That was like uh, jaw drop right there. Because I wasn't, um, I wasn't really boxing for that long. It was, it was only been like a month or so. And he reached out to me that I was uh, surprised. Is there currently any professional fighters that you would like to spar with and will you be going back to Leo Santa Cruz camp to spar? Um, I mean, I could uh, talk, to, uh, talk to my team. I'm not uh, targeting nobody, but 
it's uh, whatever the best work that I can get from and whatever I can learn from, that's what I'll be. Uh, where do you see yourself within five years? You'll be 21. Where do you see yourself in five years? Probably a world champion with a, a, being a great role model, giving back to the community, and being an inspiration to a lot of uh, the younger kids. Thank you so much for taking some time to do this interview. Uh, thank you for having me.